Her Look is underwritten with a generous support of Colin Morton DDS, focusing on progressive dentistry for exceptional natural-looking results. Experience the knowledgeable, skilled care of Dr. Morton and staff as they bring your smile to its beautiful best. Colin Morton DDS, progressive dentistry for generations. I'm Donna Frank, and here we are with Her Look on location at Forts Ferry Farm, where we are in Latham, New York. And I am so excited. I've been waiting a long time to do this. I'm here to interview and talk to Emma Hurst, who owns Forts Ferry Farm with her fabulous husband, John Barker, and Miss Rachel D'Ambrosio, who works here with her fabulous husband, Matthew. And I'm fortunate enough to have known both of them and, and Emma a very long time, huh? Very long. Yeah. These are two really dynamic women in their 30s doing lots of different things in their life so far. And I just want to know, we're going to start a little bit back into in the beginning of, you know, how did you, how was growing up for you? Where were you, where are you from, Rachel? Um, I was born in California, mm -hmm. but I grew up in Florida and grew up on the water, boating, loving life on the beach and uh, went to New York City for college and that's how I kind of got. And that's how you got yep. to New York City? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first time. <laughs> Emma, what about you? I was born in California. I was raised in Albany, New York and um, growing up was pretty great. I mean, I wanted to leave it since I've like moved here, but now I'm back. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you're back too. <laughs> I was in New York City for a while and and Hawaii, but uh, now we are back and we live just outside of Albany. So what I want to know is you're both accomplished, and we'll get to a lot of these details, but you're both accomplished chefs. And I, when I mean chefs, I don't mean at home. I mean in pretty famous restaurants that you've either worked in or owned, like Sorella. And I'm not really sure if that's what you thought you wanted to do when you were growing up, you know? So when did you first think? think you were in love with food, Emma? Um, I knew that I wanted to do something with food around the age of four. Um, it was always very prominent in my life. I loved cooking with my family and my aunts uh, in the kitchen during Thanksgiving. That was my favorite holiday. Um, and just uh, entertaining in general. My dad loves to throw a party and I definitely inherited that gene. Um, so just entertaining and uh, you know bringing people together around food has always really been a part of my life and that kind of inspired me to go down that path as a career. And your career path uh, went from from high school here in the Albany area to deciding to go to? Uh, John and I both went to the Culinary Institute of America that's where we met and um, uh, shortly after that I opened up Sorella down in the city and uh, John came to work with me uh, in my second year of operations there. Cool. And Rachel, what about you? Um, I grew up loving art. I was always in a painting and drawing and watercolor, and I kind of had an easel in my room, and that was always my focus, and I majored in art history. And But I always worked in restaurants, so I started when I was 13 as a dishwasher, and I paid for school by working in restaurants. Every position, back of house, front of house, bartending, which was my favorite. And, um, oh, I know. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. And, um, and it just clicked when I was in my early 20s. Like, why am I doing something I kind of love? And I would pay more attention to work. And I realized that I was meant to be in the restaurant industry. So went back to New York after graduating college. Went home to Florida for a little while. Then went back to New York. And worked in a pretty famous restaurant in New I York. I worked in Amali. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great restaurant. That's a big and deal. And it's still a great restaurant. And it's still a great it's restaurant. delicious. Let me ask you something, Rachel. Do you think that there is a little bit of a connection between art, history, and food? Yes. There's a huge connection. Um, you create, you're nourishing people in a way that you can do with art, making art, expressing yourself. And um, so I connected on that level, and I got to eat it. Oh, yeah. Which is so much more enjoyable. can't eat a painting. You can't eat oil paint. <laughs> well, some people eat paint. Well, <laughs> <laughs> some people do. But well, you can always tell those people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know some of those people, unfortunately. Not us, no. so, so sort of fast forwarding to, you know, how you ended up coming back here, obviously family, and, you know, this piece of land was available, and you had a dream sort of about farming, didn't you, Emma? I definitely had a dream about, you know, I knew I didn't want to be in restaurants anymore. That's why I got out of them in the city and sold off my places. Um, but, you know, I, my love of food didn't, that didn't diminish my love of food. So um, 
I knew I wanted to continue to work with food and I'm just really excited to have a place where I can have events and I get to touch food every day and we get to grow very cool things. We grow stuff that we ourselves would geek out over cooking. Because this isn't just a farm, it's an heirloom right. farm. So tell us a little about heirloom. So heirloom seeds um, are seeds that predate genetic modification, so predating World War um, when kind of the Industrial Revolution was happening mm -hmm. and people started packaging stuff to transport longer or, and, you know, flavor kind of came last. But these seeds are specific seeds that have been saved by generations of farmers and tribes and families around the world um, for their specific unique characteristics. Some of them quirky and weird to look at, others, you know, extraordinarily tasty, packed with flavor. Um, so that it, it's it's non-genetically modified and a lot of our seeds are also done through um, open air pollination which is meaning not done in a petri dish it's done you know in the field with by bees mm. so cool so all right i'm going to fast forward again so here you are now in this beautiful beautiful place in this really wonderful farm you have a big events you know venue going up, um, planning some pretty major things, really strong and dynamic women, and you both now become moms. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that sort of, <laughs> yeah, that changed everything kind of, didn't it? It changes you, having children, no matter women or man or whatever, having children changes you. But as a female and as running a business or being a chef, for example, it's, you know, there's these challenges that you have to kind of overcome, but we both have really strong, I mean, I speak for John, but I feel like I can. <laughs> really strong support system. I can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have a great partnership, and that's what makes it work. So that's a really key word that I want to kind of play on. You know, when, when I hate to say that I'm that much older than you, but I am, um, <laughs> things were different. And even when our moms were growing up, things were different. Mm -hmm. So the word partnership really comes into play here, especially when you talk about this is, you know, John has the passion to be out in the field and you have the passion for events or cooking. Mm -hmm. So does that, do you see the relationship being very, you know, equal that way? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a partnership. And I definitely think the role of a dad has changed um, in this day and age, age versus back, like, you know, in the 50s when dad would come home from work and the kids would run up to him and mom would have a microwave dinner ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mac and cheese. <laughs> um, dads are much more prevalent in yeah. kids' lives. And it works out great for us way because you know and and you know Rachel and I we were also used to working with our husbands before so we already had that partnership yeah that actually really of, helps you know of working together mm -hmm. uh, I mean you were the executive chef mm -hmm. Matt was your CDC mm -hmm. what's yeah. the CDC chef, chef de cuisine. cuisine thank you very much so, uh. I was the executive chef John was my executive sous chef so, so. we were their bosses I can't, I can't wait to talk to them for a second about all this because I want to know how they feel. But anyway, so you have big plans for your families and you have big plans for Ford's Ferry Farm here. And, uh, you know, I think it's wonderful. I have a couple of quick things I want to pull over. I want to pull off this. At one point in your life, you know I would throw this out, wouldn't you? You, had, you made a, a cookbook I did. when you were at Sorella. And um, during that time, which this is a fabulous cookbook, during that time, I know something that you did that I bet you people out there would want to hear a little bit about. You, you were a, a competitor on Iron Chef. I was many moons ago, um, <laughs> and I was actually it. on it with John. We just cooked so well together, and we all knew each other so well. We didn't really have to speak a lot during the competition. Okay. It was just very much like a poetic dance. You should see her cut the gnocchi in that episode. Oh, I did. I've watched that episode, by the way, it's and I think it's fast. still on YouTube. <laughs> it's on favorite. iTunes. Favorite. <laughs> on iTunes favorite. Okay. Uh. So anyway, yeah, so so let, let me ask you this. What, what advice would you give? I'll ask you, and I'll start with you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. what, what advice will you give to your, your, uh, your little, the little girls that, that are, you know, maybe six, seven, eight, or even 15, 16 out there looking at this episode or meeting you along the way about, you know, how, what's well, just your best piece of advice for growing up and looking at the future? Um, have courage. Speak for yourself. Speak up. Um, don't let anyone tell you how to live your life don't let anyone walk all over you and be nice 
be a nice person. And what about you, Miss Emma? Um, I would say dare to be different. Um, be kind. Trust your intuitions and mm, don't take crap from anyone. There you go. And what about your role models? Tell me about your role models. You have role models right now? I have role models. Um, my mother is a role model, uh, as she would be, hopefully. Um, my grandmother had a big influence on my life. She was a typical 50s grandmother. I mean, she was like the epitome of come home from work, dinner's ready on the table. I mean, total opposite of who we are. But she was just really loving, and she taught me how to treat people, which I think is more important than how to do a job. And um, Anna Klinger from Aldi Law was a big hmm. role model for me. She taught me pretty much everything I know in the kitchen. So hmm. give her cred. Good. And, you? and Emma. And Emma. Oh, and Emma. Yeah. Aww. What about you, Emma? Um, my biggest role models in my life have probably been my parents. Um, you know, my mom is a very strong woman with, uh, she's got her voice, but she's also one of the kindest people ever. She's a minx of a lady. And my dad, who is a brilliant businessman and uh, can really garner attention in a room. Um, and also, you know, John is, he's got the patience of a freaking saint, which is something I lack at times. So he's taught me a lot and I strive to be more patient in my life. <laughs> I think that, I think it's worked. <laughs> I've known you a long time and you have turned into a beautiful, beautiful young woman. And you, Rachel, are such a pleasure to know you. Oh, you and to be that. here at Forts Ferry Farm today and to be able to chat with you and talk to you about your lives and your future. And I only wish you the best because I love you both. And I, uh, I hope that we can come back and do another series when we're finished with the, uh, with the, with the barn or the venue and yeah. we can kind of do a little barbecue or something, right? 2020, baby. 2020, <laughs> baby. So that's it from us at Fort's Ferry Farm. I'm Donna Frank with Her Look on Look TV. What is it like working for your wife? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, it was great. She's, uh, I've worked for her before in a restaurant setting, so I'm used to it. But you're not really working for her now. I'm only kidding. <laughs> her look is underwritten with the generous support of Divorce Mediation Center, LLC. Mediation is less expensive, confidential, and much less intimidating than going to court. At DMC, Helping couples to make their own decisions with results that are less stressful for the children of the marriage is our goal. Divorce Mediation Center, LLC. Approved by the American Bar Association.